Hello everybody, welcome to the sound test room. Today we are taking a look at the Baby Audio BA1, which has just been released for iOS. I did a video on it a few weeks ago when it was released on desktop, but here it is on iOS. There are tons of presets in here. I'm not even kidding, hundreds and hundreds. All these different uh, preset banks here have loads and loads of presets in. And there's also stuff from Venus Theory, Pegboard, Sam Rabia, loads. Loads of effects and stuff. There's pads here. That was lead, sorry. are going to go through the entire synth i will play loads of sounds as well but it will be a bit of a tutorial um synth is pretty straightforward but that's a good thing it's a good thing right it's modeled after the original hardware for me personally i like that i like that it gives me a uh, a limitation of course easier to program as well so it's all on one screen no other screens to be worrying about Different controls across the top here. This one here switches between poly and mono. So if I hover over those three little dots, it will change to polyphonic. If I click it, it's now, now monophonic. Go back to poly. This will switch velocity on. Or switch it off. For most synth sounds, leads and stuff like that, I prefer, like especially with mono synths or stuff like that, I prefer velocity off. Um, then this one here will give you an initial patch, which is great because that's where we're going to start. Right. We shall go from left to right. Gliss. This is absolutely bloody brilliant in this. Right. So up to about halfway. polyphonic as well by the way so up to about halfway it, re it behaves like normal glide above that it turns into glissando which is different uh very rare very very rare to find glissando like, like, like this on synthesizers where what it does is it steps up in semitones The CS80 had this and Van Gelis used it a lot. One of my favourite features that is, and it'll go slower as we get to the top. I love that. I really, really love that. Right, so you have two oscillators, two oscillators. You can fade between the oscillators with the X fade. One oscillator at the moment is on a saw wave. The other oscillator is on a square wave. So, square wave, saw wave, and a mixture of the both. Let's stick with oscillator one and take a look at that. We have pitch control. Double tap to reset. It's a fine pitch control on this one. We have our oscillator settings here. So these are our octaves, of course. Here is the now. This well, you won't even be able to move this unless you're on the correct oscillator, which is pulse width modulation. However. We have triangle wave here. Then we have our square. So it also shows you in the little uh, header box here what's going on. Then we have square, then we have pulse. You still won't be able to 
remove this because this is just a pulse wave. And then you have pulse width. If you want to make that classic Steve Winwood polyphonic Prophet 5 lead sound. So super simple oscillator controls, right? Let's go to oscillator B. And we have the same. Except on the second one, instead of having our pulse width modulation, we have noise. Which we can, of course, filter over here with the filter, right? Let's put it back onto square wave. Then we have octaves again. And then we have again pitch, which is, this is fine. But with this one, we can go click this and go between fine and an octave. So we could set this to plus seven, which is a fifth for this one, blend between the two. And we've got a classic fifth lead. Sound. Uh, if we put this onto a saw wave, of course, let's do that. And this onto a saw wave. Let's do something with the, let's just not worry about the FM just for a moment. tracking on and off let's put a bit of glide on and then we're into classic kind of Froggy kind of lead sounds and stuff like that. Okay, awesome stuff. So that's a, a good plus using the fine, the octave range on the fine tune. And then you can set it in between in, for anything in between that. Now, moving on, we've just, the FM is kind of a, it's kind of a, it's not like real FM, but it blends, it, it cross modulates between these two sort of things. And we have a self-oscillating, self-oscillating filter as well. Which will be out of tune, of course, unless you take the time to tune it up. So you can actually play the filter, which is quite a fun thing. Okay, so let's change the... Oh, sorry, I'm on mic. Leave that in the middle. Then we have an envelope here. And you can have the envelope synced or not synced. So let's take that down so you can hear it in action. So we can make some cool plucky sounds here. Let's do this.
should make some cool kind of bass sounds. Now, let's move on to what, let's leave it on, on kind of that sound. Actually, it'd be nice. Okay, moving on to we have a very basic LFO, which can either be a uh, filter or... Is that oscillator one? I can't... It's very difficult. Anyway, but leave it on filter. It's very small, very, very hard for me to see. Doesn't mean it's, you know, it's a game changer out. So speed here and the amount here going to the filter. Let's turn the sustain up so you can hear that. Oscillator one. Um, so you can create some nice detuning, but you can also do that here, of course, with the pitch. If we put it onto fine. So we just click it and we take the, the um, let's put this back on filter. So turn the amount off a minute. You can get some cool chorusy detune, chorusy effects. Let's reset that. Okay, moving along, we have a kind of a side chain which will pump away to the BPM. Um, if I have this running, I guess. You'll hear it if I stop it. Oh, you'll hear it if it's stopped as well. It just picks up the BPM. And we can have it pre or post. It's another effect. Basically, another effect you can add in. Uh, next along, we have Tone Dark. Kind of another filter. And bright. Then we have Drive. Which is nice. I really like that. And we have circuit or overdrive. Not tons of difference between the two there. We have then some effects here. So let's look at the chorus first. The chorus is basic, it's either on or off. Let's turn this drive off, shall we? So that's the amount and now the length here. Nice reverb. Then we also have a delay. And we can have it either free running or we can it is uh or we can have it synced to the BPM. And again this the display shows you everything you need to know.
Oh, a couple of other, a couple of other neat things they put in. Right, you obviously the original unit it was a tiny thing, really. It was small keys and everything. Um, the Yamaha, I think it was a CS zero one or something. <laughs> I really like that glissando. It reminds me of Vangelis so much. Anyway, you have a battery control here. And if you have this at 100%, it's like you've got brand new batteries. But then you can degrade it so those batteries wear out over time, of course. And it's going to be very subtle. So even when it gets to the bottom, you'll notice it. Oh, no. Bat batteries are broken. Good. You've got batteries now. Mum, can you, Mum, can you have, can you have twenty five p for some batteries? No, you've got some chores to do. Oh. So anyway, that's pretty cool, especially for you. kind of lo-fi stuff the other cool thing they put in which works great with battery wear okay is this little speaker here so this emulates it playing through its speaker sort of thing so let's put this back up to and let's just make a few adjustments let's switch the leg off and reverb off let's open the filter up you hear it much better now right and this is where messing around with the tone is very very cool as well Okay, so let's switch that back on. Let's put a brand new speaker. Batteries in there it is. Oh, and then you have your... Oh, also you have here, just under, underneath the output, which is weird. I would have put it up here. You have a randomization. Oh, my. Another beautifully... Pulse with sound. <laughs> now, what's this do here? What's this? Is that oh, that's preset? Say my preset, my preset. Oh, I call this. Uh, I call it Winwood because. That sound always, always reminds me of the album Ark of a Diver and the one that came after it. Actually, I can't remember the name of that one. Um, I, the story goes that Steve Rimwood uh, borrowed uh, Dave Stewart's Prophet 5. Let's enter that. Uh, it's Dave Stewart's Prophet 5, and this you get you could get this sound on the Prophet 5. I mean, I might be totally wrong, but it's in user now anyway. So there you go. So that's how you do it. You hit this. And, and that was, I mean, like I said, that's just. You pitch bend. Lovely. Let's do that again, shall we? Let's randomize again. It's not going to be good every time, of course.
one. Vintage Prague. Just for fun. Vintage Prague. Yes. All right. And then we can change colour here. Uh, this kind of, well, actually, it was the colour of the original, but uh, it's a nice colour. And we've got this kind of, I don't know, blue, aqua bluey green. It's very nice. And then uh, this pink and then orange. I think I chose the orange for my uh, VST video. This is really nice as well. So just to reiterate on the side chain thing, it kind of it pretend side chain. If we increase our tempo considerably, go done. It's gonna, you, you get the idea, right? It's linked directly to the, to the tempo. So it means if you know you've got some drums, you'll get that kind of it will. It's pseudo like pumping effect, you know. But there you go. Anyway, we can uh, take this down again to something more sensible. And it's going to be slower. And you can go pre and post. I don't know. So, yeah, awesome. Let's see if it's remembered me, Wimwood Patch. <laughs> It's almost impossible to get a sound like that without not so much pulse width modulation, but being able to adjust the width of the pulse, if you know what I mean. By the way, guys, if you're enjoying the video so far, please strike the like, subscribe to the channel. If you're not subscribed, please consider becoming a patron. Help support me and Joe here at the Sound Test Room. It's a, such a lovely sound. Lovely, lovely. Okay, so let's see what we've got going on here. We have brass and strings. So this, actually, this is the patch that loads when you load the synth up. The basic brass. So uh, for a, for a little bit now, in fact, in fact, probably for the rest of the video, I'm going to play through a bunch of patches. Maybe do a few uh, adjustments and tweaks on the sound. But it's a very easy synthesizer to program. In fact, thinking about it, for a, someone who's interested in learning how to program kind of a virtual analog synth uh, you can't go far wrong but it's the sounds are great you know it's not like it sounds cheap or tacky it, unless you go like this and you'll go where did you find that in your shed like, 
this sounds good, so we could make this even darker. Let's drag the stain up. Thing, maybe. a delay on that'd be a good idea okay let's just save this as uh, darker darker nice uh so carrying on here let's see what's this 80s runner synth oh yeah Well, you know what it needs, didn't you? It's just epic. That's really great. Mono sound. You can, and it's nice, actually, because you change sound, whether it's written in the mono one. You can see if it's mono, if it's got the one little dot there, right? Whoa. Driving.
I mean, honestly, if if you weren't ever interested in programming it, you know, it's just we're still in this um, second hand Selena. polyphonically. Controlling a filter basically with the envelope there. That's nice. Guys, if you're watching on a premiere, thank you so much for watching. You can start saying to Archie, we don't know if you're chatting in the chat stream. I'm going to play for a few more minutes, blast through a few more of these awesome presets, and uh, yeah, I'll see you all. I'll see you all very soon. Uh, no premieres over the weekend, of course, but there you go. There will be videos. Very nice, but I really would say you can go and go and get this if you're into this kind of vibe. Of course. It's a nice synth to learn to program stuff on, but it's the fact that they've made such an effort with the. Let's have some listen to some of these pads. Such an effort with the preset management. Um, you know the amount of presets they've de had designed for it. What I like, I really like, is the fact that I can play, I can, once the preset manager's open, I can mess around with the, you know, it's annoying sometimes, you know, when, you, when you're in something, right, and you're, you're trying to make an adjustment to a control, and the preset manager closes every time you touch something, that's kind of annoying, you have to actually click 
outside it to do that and miss. But so I really like that, I think it's cool. See some, I mean, bases. Oh, yeah, listen. Meaty. So we've got special effects. So. Some cool percussion stuff. Oh, synths and drones. Guys, I'm going to leave it there. Nice. 